Okay, so here's an, inter an interest principal rate and time problem, and this is the formula up here that we'll be using for um, these types of problems. It, it says a bank gives you a simple interest loan. The rate is 9.5%. After two years, there's our time, you have paid the entire principal plus $86.45 in interest. What was the original principal amount of your loan? And so we're going to go back to this formula because it says we can relate interest is equal to our principal times our rate times our time. So we're just going to put the items that we know into the formula exactly where they are. So it starts with interest. Do we know the interest? Yes, we know the interest was $86.45. That should equal principal. Do we know the principal? No, we don't. Okay, that's what we're trying to find. So I'm just going to put a P there. It's supposed to be times the rate. Okay, but notice one problem with the rate is that it's written as a percent. And we can't put percents into a formula. We have to change them to decimal form. So when you start with rate, what you want to do is say, okay, percent means per 100 or divided by 100. Okay, 9.5% means 9.5 out of 100. So you just divide that, 9.5, you divide it by 100 to find out what it would be as a decimal. And it should give you 0 0.095. This is the number that we're going to use in our formula for the rate. Okay, so, so far we have $86.45 equals P times here our rate of 0 0.095 times the amount of time in years, and it happens to be two years, they said. And our job now is to solve this formula. So we've got, again, 86.45 equals P times 0 0.095 times 2. We want to go ahead and simplify this part right here. So we multiply. We're solving an equation. First thing you have to do is simplify each side, if you can. And we can, 0 0.095 times 2. is 0.19. Our job here is to solve for P. Right now it's multiplied by 0.19, so our rules for solving equations is that we always do the opposite. And the opposite of multiplying by 0.19 is to divide by 0.19. So we divide on each side to keep the equation balanced, and we get 86.45 divided by 0.19 is $455. So our principal, our answer, the principal amount was $455. Okay, here we have a similar question. Um, it says this time the bank is giving us a simple interest loan. Um, the interest rate on the loan is 8.5%. After four years, there's the time, you've paid the entire principal, plus you paid $144.84 in interest. What was the original principal amount of the loan? So again, we have almost exactly the same problem, just different numbers. We use our formula the same way. Okay, We put in what we know. Do we know the interest? We do. It says the interest was $144.84. That's supposed to equal the principal. Do we know the principal? No, that's what they're asking for. So I'm just going to call it P. Times the rate. Our rate was 8.5%, but remember before we can use that in the formula, we have to change it out of percent form and into decimal form. So 8.5% means per 100 or divided by 100. So you just take your percent, divide it by 100. Essentially what it does is just moves the decimal over two places to the left. Okay, 8.5 divided by 100 gives us 0 0.085 for our rate, and now we can use it in the formula. Then the formula says times the amount of time. How long was this? Um, it was four years. Okay, so that's our equation that we need to solve to find the original principle. Again, the first thing we're going to do is do any simplifying we can, and right here we can. 
we can go ahead and multiply 0 0.085 times 4. When we do, we get 0.34. So we have P, what we're trying to find, times 0.34 equals 144.84. Again, to solve equations, you do the opposite. The opposite of multiplying by 0.34 is to divide by 0.34. So P is 144.84 divided by 0.34, which is 426. Again, that's in dollars, so I'm going to put those two zeros on the end. So my answer, the original principal, or the original amount of the loan, was $426. Here's another look at this question. Um, it uses the same formula, but let's look at what information we have. Carmelo puts $2,200 into a savings bond that pays simple interest. Here's our interest of 3.4%. How much money will the bonds be worth at the end of 5.5 years? So and here's our formula for interest. Okay, um, So let's start by finding the amount of interest. We put in the information we have. Do we know the interest? No. Okay. Do we know the principal? The principal is the amount you start with in the account, and we do. It's $2,200. Times our rate. Our rate, again, is uh, this time is 3.4%. But again, before we can use that, we have to change the percent into decimal form. So remember, percent means per 100 or divided by 100. So we take 3.4 divided by 100 and we get 0 0.034. That is the rate we're going to use in our formula up here. And then times the amount of time, 5.5. Okay, let's go ahead and calculate that. Now notice this one's a little different. We're not really solving for anything because all of our numbers are on one side the I is already by itself. Our interest over here is already a loan. All we have to do is multiply these numbers together and we'll know the interest. So 2,200 times 0 0.034 times 5.5. And make sure you're careful with your decimal here. It is a 0.034. Um, when we do that, we get $411.40. So what did we just find here? You always want to go back and make sure you've answered the question that was asked. It says, how much money will the bonds be worth at the end? So we really haven't answered the question yet. We found out how much interest you earn, but remember originally they were already worth $2,200. So now they're worth an additional 411. So we want to know what the total will be at the end. And the total is going to be your principal that you started with plus any interest that you earned. So in this case, we started with $2,200. We g gained interest or earned interest of $411.40. Sorry, just wrote a four instead of a 40. There we go. All we have to do is add those together and we'll know how much they are worth total. They're worth a total of $2,611.40. Misspeaking all over the place here, and 40 cents. Let me erase that and write it more clearly. Okay, so there we have it. The bonds in the at the end of those years will be worth two thousand six hundred and eleven dollars and forty cents. Okay, here's another one. It says find the interest and tell the amount to the nearest and the total amount to the nearest cent. So we're supposed to answer two things here. First, the interest, and then the total amount. To find the interest, again, we're going to use our formula up here. So the interest is equal to the principal, the amount you start with. So it says we're investing $200 times the rate. The rate is 7.25. Again, that's percent. So we need to come over here quickly and change our percent to a decimal. Again, percent means per 100 or divided by 100. So just take your 7.25 divided by 100 and you get 
0.0725. You don't want to round that off. You want to keep it all um, or it will change your answer. Okay, so there's our rate. Times the amount of time. How long was it in? It was in for three years. So we take 200 times 0 0.0725 times 3 and we get 43.5. Again, remember this is money, so that would be $43.50. So our interest is $43.50, but we're not done because we were supposed to find the interest and the total amount. So here's our first answer. Our first answer is that the interest is $43.50. Now we also need to find the total, which would be the amount you started with, $200, plus the interest you earned. We just found out that would be $43.50. So we get a total amount of $243.50 because you have the amount you started with plus the interest you earned. Okay, this one's a little more complicated. It says a bank gives you a simple interest loan at a rate of 9.5%. After four years, you have paid the entire principal plus $135.28. What was the original principal? So that tells me I, I'm not going to know this. I'm going to have to use solving to find it. So again, put in the parts you do know. What was the interest? Well, it said the interest on that was $135.28. That should equal the principal, which I don't know. I'm just going to call it P times the rate. The rate was 9.5%. Again, before you can use that, you have to change percent or per hundred into decimal form without the percent sign. So to do that, we do 9.5 divided by 100 gives me 0 0.095 as my rate. And then times the amount of time. The amount of time it says went past was four years. 135.28 equals P times, let's go ahead and multiply our 0 0.095 times 4, gives us 0.38. Okay, so we want to solve for this P right now. It's multiplied by 0.38. We do the opposite and divide by 0.38. And whatever you do on one side of an equation, you have to do the same on the other to keep it balanced. And that's how we solve. So we ha just have to go 135.28 divided by 0.38. And when we do that, we get 356. Remember, this is dollars, so it's going to be 356.00 for our principal. All right, here's our last one um, that we're going to do. It's a multi-step question. Um, has parts A and B. Of course, we'll do part A first. Okay, so it says you put $1,500 in a simple interest saving account. Two years later, the total account balance is $1,665. A asks, what is the interest rate of the savings account? Well, we can use our formula up here to find the interest rate if we put in the things we have and solve for what we're missing for. The problem, the only problem is that um, we don't know the interest right now. They gave us the original amount and then notice this is the total. So that's the principal plus the interest. The first thing I'm gonna do is say, okay, then how much interest did I? All right, so we started with 1,500 ended up with 1,665. Whatever the increase was, that's our interest that we've earned. So to find the interest, we're just going to take the $1,665, subtract the 1,500 that we started with, and that will tell us our interest. Okay, so it looks like we've, we earned $165 in interest in those two years. So now we can use our formula here. It says interest, so again, our interest that we earned was $165.
is equal to the principal. We do know the principal this time. Um, the principal is the amount you started with, so we started with 1,500 times the rate. We don't know the rate. I'm just going to call it R times the amount of time. We do know the time for part A was two years. We want to find our rate. Uh, again, we're just going to solve this equation, so we need to simplify this side. Notice we have a 1,500 and a 2. Everything's multiplied. <clears throat> So we can multiply the 1,500 times the 2, just to simplify it a little bit. So now we would have $165 equals 3,000 times R. Again, our job is to solve for R, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3,000, here to get rid of it, and here to keep the equation balanced. We get a rate of 0 0.055. <clears throat> now to write that as a percent, we're going to go the opposite direction. Before, when we had it a percent, we divided by 100. Here we're going to multiply by 100. That will put it back in percent form. Okay, so we have a rate of 5.5%. That's our answer for part A. For part B, it said, what will be the total amount of money in the account after eight years? So now they want us to go back and say, now that we know what our rate is, instead of having it in for two years, put it in for eight years, and how much money will you have total? So we use our formula, um, it, the interest, wow, I spelled that wrong, equals principal times rate times time. Our principal, again, we're still starting with $1,500. Our rate is 0 0.055, um, we change it back from percent <laughs> into decimal so we can use it in the formula, times the amount of time, and they wanted it for eight years. So we multiply 1,500 times 0 0.055 times eight, that gives us $660 in interest. They want to know how much total will be in the account. Well, we started with $1,500. If we put it in for eight years, we earn $660. We add those together, we'll have our total. So after eight years at that interest rate, we will have $2,160.